Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I definitely appreciate you joining me. And first of all, I've got to say, I got a haircut this morning and I feel like an absolutely brand new man. It feels so good to get your haircut. If you haven't gotten a haircut recently, a lot of the haircutting places are opening back up. Man, go get yourself a haircut. Gosh, it feels really, really good. Anyway, y'all have been waiting for this watch for quite some time now. It's It's been months. I've had this on order for months. Uh, this is the G-Shock Move 200 meter solar GPS quartz. And this is model number GBDH 1000-1A7. And again, this is, you know, I've been waiting for this thing for, gosh, three or four months now. They kept, you know, pushing shipping back because of the uh, COVID-19 issue. Uh, it finally arrived today. I'm super excited. Now, this is going to be a quick overview of the watch, not a full detailed review. A full detailed review would be two things. One, it would bore the crap out of me because <laughs> this is basically a an active style watch. This is for an active person that works out, runs, jogs, you know, lifts weights, is very active, and that's basically what this watch is for. Uh, and secondly, there is just so much stuff to go over with this watch, it would take absolutely forever to do a review. So I think I actually made a mistake buying this. Not that it's not a nice watch. I love the watch itself. It's just got a whole bunch of stuff I will never, ever use. I really wanted it just for the solar and the GPS aspect of it. But, you know, it's got all this other stuff if you live an active lifestyle. And if you live an active lifestyle, this might be the watch for you. It's just not for me. So I'm probably going to actually send this one back to G-Shock. Uh, but it's, it's a cool watch. You know, either way, it's still a cool watch. Uh, I just don't think this is going to be the watch for me. Anyway, also make sure you check out my Amazon shopping channel if you like this or any of the other watches I've reviewed on my channel. I do get a small commission if you buy from my Amazon store, so I definitely appreciate it. Again, way too many specs to go over, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put a link in the description field for the full specs for this watch. But the basic specs, you're looking at a 63 millimeter resin and stainless steel case. Uh, it's 20 millimeters thick. It's 55 millimeters lug to lug. It's on a 21 millimeter resin strap. It does have a mineral crystal. It's 200 meters water resistant, which is 660 feet, and it weighs 101 grams. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to compare this to its little brother, which is a GBD 100-1A7, which is significantly cheaper at about $150. This is about $399. Uh, you're not going to get all the, a whole bunch of other features that this has, but that might be an option for you. Anyway, let's go ahead and open this thing up. Let me show you here. Now, this is actually called the G-Squad in other parts of the world, but in North America, they're calling it the Move. Let's open this thing up. There we go. See what you get on the box here. If I can get this thing out. There we go. GPS, heart rate, smartphone link, 200 meters water resistance, dual charging system. And you also get in here, this has your uh, charging cable and your manual. So I'm not going to open it up because, I mean, you know what comes in here. All right. Let's go ahead and put this stuff back. And guys, it would literally take me an hour. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a reviewer out there that's going to go over every single function of this watch. That's just not going to be me. <laughs> Let's open it up. Good looking watch for sure. Love this display, this MIP LCD display. It's a high definition display. Love the display. So that's one thing it's got going for it, for sure. This is a new type of display that uh, G-Shock is making. And this also has the, uh, that its little brother, that GBD 100-1A7, uh, actually has the exact same display. It just doesn't come with, you know, GPS, solar, um, all the different ABC functions, you know, compass, altimeter, barometer, thermometer, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't come with all those, uh, and it's a lot cheaper. But this one, man, I, I like it a lot, but I really do think I made a mistake in the fact it's just got a whole bunch of stuff I'll never, ever use. I really just wanted it just for the GPS function and the solar function. Uh, it is pretty power hungry. I uh, went ahead and went outside and went ahead and tried to uh, pair it with the GPS satellite. It paired in like, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. But you do that a couple times, it is definitely going to drain the battery, so you might want to be a little careful. So with the GPS function, you're using the heart rate monitor, you get about 18 hours of battery life with like an intermittent reception. Normal reception, which is continuous reception, gives you about 14 hours. And again, that's using GPS and the heart rate. Uh, without the GPS and heart rate functions, you're looking at about a 12 month battery life on this thing. And that's just with solar. Uh, and again, if you want to, you know, kind of put this in the drawer for whatever reason and not use it, it does have a power save function, which gives you 34 months 
of battery. So if you just put this away, forget about it, it's still going to be good for, what, that's almost three years. Good grief. So everyday use with GPS, uh, if you're, you know, you're doing a lot, you have a big training regimen, you're out there, you're active, you're looking at about 18 hours, you're going to want to top it off with the, uh, the included charger. But just everyday use with just time and that type of stuff, you're looking about a year. So anyway, that's going to really vary depending on how you use the watch. Uh, but it does have, again, solar, uh, and it does have like that backup uh, charging system that you can actually just, you know, plug it into your computer or whatever USB port you have and charge the watch up. Uh, the overall looks of it, again, I love it. All right, so you've got multiple different displays with this watch, and this is the graphical interface, the bar graph. I just think this one looks the coolest. That's why I have it on the screen. But you press up here at, uh, what is that, about 10 o'clock, and this shows you your uh, heart rate stuff. And it also calculates your blood, uh, your oxygen level in your blood. It does that through a calculation. It doesn't actually have a sensor that does that. Uh, this is your achievements monthly. I guess your steps and whatever you've done, whatever you've achieved. Uh, what is this? Heart rate stuff, more heart rate stuff. Again, this is really geared towards runners and super active people, guys, of which I am not. Uh, what is this right here? This is your world time up here at... Uh, at 12 o'clock to 7.35. So this is UTC, which is basically over in London. So they're, what, four hours ahead of us, five hours ahead of us. And then you have a big time display right there. There you go, 5.23 Saturday. There you go. And it shows you your battery percentage, uh, your day of the week, your month. Obviously, you're running seconds. So those are your major displays you can look at. Go ahead and click Mode. This is your heart rate. And if you notice, if I turn it over, you're going to see a little light. See a little green LED? That actually goes through your skin, and then there's another sensor that picks up what your heart rate is. Pretty cool, man. And I'll show you this a little bit more here in a second. Pretty cool. In fact, let me uh, give you a better shot right now. There you go. Nice case back. Two really highly polished edges right there, by the way. Nice stainless steel case back. And, you know, watch is a mixture of uh, stainless steel and resin. Pretty cool. All right. So let's go ahead. Uh, there's your heart rate. What is this? This is your workout stuff. Guys, again, all this is absolutely foreign to me. I don't work out. I haven't worked out in 25 years. Stopwatch. I do know what a stopwatch is. There you go. Uh, what is this? Uh, this is your compass. There you go. Pretty cool. This is your activity time. I guess this is, uh, it'll measure with the GPS, you know, how far you've gone in your run, and that's what this is for. What is this, training status? No clue, fitness load, no idea what this is. Something for healthy people. <laughs> there you go. Uh, notification, you can get notifications. This is not a touchscreen, so you can't respond to anything. But when you pair this with your watch, you can get your emails and notifications and calls and all that other type of stuff. Pretty cool. And there you go. And this over here is your light, and I'll show you that here in just a second. This is your run. What you do is you start this. Okay, and what that means is it's going to go ahead and start acquiring your GPS. And then you can start running if you want to keep going uh, before it actually acquires a signal. Press it again. Press play. Now it's started. There you go. Press stop. Go down here. Press delete. So basically, it'll track where you've ran, you know, what your distance is and all that other type of stuff. And obviously, if I wanted to try to acquire the GPS signal, I'm indoors. So it's not going to be able to do it, but that's what the screen looks like. It's deleting that record. It can, it can save up to like a hundred records or something like that. It's taking a while. It's a little bit slow. I wish it was a little bit faster. There we go. So again, you press this right here. That's going to acquire, going to try to acquire your GPS signal. And when you're outside, it's pretty quick, man. I have to admit 15, 20 seconds, maybe. Now, one thing I noticed, I don't know if y'all can see this. There, and I don't know if this is just a, a menu underneath this GPS screen, but see that little segment of LCD right there, right where the edge of my fingernail is? See that thing lighting up? That would drive me nuts. Why is it lighting up? I don't understand. And then you have a couple little other segments. It looks like they're, they're lit up when they don't need to be. Like, I don't know if it's an error in the, the programming, uh, but why do they have these little pieces, these, these little segments of LCD lighting up when they don't need to. I'm not quite sure. This looks like some sort of little arrow. Uh, and I have no idea what this one is. I don't know if y'all can see that. So you can see that better. I'm not quite sure what the purpose of these is. 
unless they're just underneath this GPS acquiring uh, menu, I'm not quite sure. But that drives me nuts. I'm not quite sure why it's there. Now, if you go to a different menu, you can see an arrow. See, there it is, and that's probably what it is. All right, we figured it out. So basically what that is, is when you're acquiring the GPS signal, there's another menu. Let me wipe the screen off real quick. All right, so what that is, is there's another menu underneath that GPS screen. All right, so I'm good. I'm not, you know, it's not driving me crazy anymore. <laughs> I know what it's for now. Thank God. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to regular timekeeping mode. All right, so now we're back on the regular timekeeping screen. So guys, I mean, the watch itself is built very well. I mean, it's made out of resin and stainless steel. You got a stainless steel bezel there. Uh, the buttons, for some reason, they feel kind of loose and a little bit cheap, which I was surprised. I mean, they're, I guess they're, they're meant to be oversized uh, for a reason, but they feel kind of, the buttons feel a little bit cheap for some reason. This is made out of stainless steel. This run button feels great. Uh, I love the overall look of the watch. Strap is super light resin, super lightweight. And again, if you're running with this watch, you don't want even a, a heavy resin or a rubber strap. So strap, pretty light. Case back, really cool case back, solid stainless steel. There's your, uh, obviously your sensor, your heart rate monitor. This is your uh, charging port to top it off uh, when you want to plug it in instead of using the solar battery. There you go. This is pretty much a proprietary strap. So if you want to get a different color strap, you're going to have to contact Casio or G-Shock. Good looking watch, man. I really like the way it looks. Uh, it's really, it is big. I mean, guys, this is a 63 millimeter case. It's a big watch. It's 20 millimeters thick. It weighs 101 grams, which is not that big a deal to me. The weight's not a big deal, uh, but the overall case size, it is a big watch. So just kind of remember that. If you're a smaller guy, guys, this might not be the watch for you. Um, you know, it, it's a big watch, man. I mean, I'm a big dude and this is a big watch. In fact, let me go ahead and try it on for you. Let you see what it looks like on the wrist. There you go. I mean, it's, it's a big one, man. No doubt. Good looking though. I love that new MIP LCD display. And I love this bar graph interface. I love that. Even though that's for something I would never use. <laughs> it just looks really cool. Now, what you might want to do to save yourself some money is you might want to get its little brother. Again, its little brother is the GBD 100-1A7. Almost, I wouldn't say almost identical, but very close to this. Uh, about, what, $240 cheaper though. You don't get GPS. Uh, you don't get the altimeter, the solar, the compass, the altimeter, barometer, thermometer. You do get that step tracking, uh, but you also, again, you don't get the heart rate. So basically, you're getting a whole bunch less. It just runs on a regular battery that lasts about two years, but it is significantly smaller than this one. And let me bring up the specs for that. So while this one is 63 millimeters, the GBD 100 is 58. Not a huge difference, but enough. Uh, it's 49 millimeters lug to lug instead of this one, which is 55 and it's significantly lighter at 69 grams. Uh, whereas this one is 101 grams. So it's, it's lighter, it's smaller. Of course, you're not getting all those other functions, but you are getting Bluetooth. You are still getting the really, really cool display. Uh, this is a new display. You're going to see in a lot of G-Shock watches coming up pretty soon. Uh, and I love, love the display, even though again, it's, it's a whole bunch of stuff. I would never, ever use. So guys, I like this thing, you know, a lot. Again, it's not going to be for me personally. It's just too much watch. It just, you know, I really just wanted it for, again, for the solar and the GPS aspect. Um, heart rate's cool. I mean, you know, it's cool, but I just, I would never, ever use it. So you might want to think about getting its little brother, again, the GBD 100. Uh, again, that's 150 bucks. Let me go ahead and show you the loom before I forget. There you go. You can go from one to three seconds. Killer, killer illumination. Love that. Let me try it again for you. There you go. Of course, you can just go ahead and press up here at, uh, what is that, 2 o'clock, and that'll turn it on as well. There you go. So there's your illumination. Really nice. And again, I love these new MIP LCD displays from G-Shock. Absolutely love them. Pretty cool. One more time. There you go. All right, guys, that's really been about it for this one. Again, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put in the description field a link to all of the specifications uh, for this one. 
as well as its little brother. And it's, it's actually a comparison link on G-Shock's website. It'll tell you all the differences between the two. And there are quite a few because, again, this one's $400. Its little brother is $150. Uh, so depending on if you need all those other ABC functions and the solar and the GPS and all that other stuff, uh, you might just want to get its little brother, man. I think that's what I might do. Uh, it looks almost identical, but, again, the other one is a little bit smaller. But if you want all those features and you're an active person, this is definitely the watch for you. It's got a ton of stuff, man. I mean, just way too much, again, to go over in a, in a pretty quick review. So anyway, guys, it's currently $399 over on Amazon's website. I'll make sure to put a link in the description field for you. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe and click that notification bell. I've got a whole bunch of new shopping in Japan stuff coming. Finally, I've been waiting forever. So I'm looking forward to reviewing those. And as usual, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next review. Take care. Bye-bye.